Hello, I'm Loz and welcome to Gunpar's Workshop and you are very welcome. <coughs> Today, Sunday the 23rd of January, uh, I thought I'd do my regular Sunday weekly update and if those of you who have watched me previous a bit of a gripe on a Friday when I spent all day just shuffling stuff around and not making any progress, well yesterday and today I have made a bit of progress. And it's good to the event and thanks for all the supportive comments that A, you lot suffer the same and B, it's something we can all cope with. Yeah, it is. That's fine. So what else have we been up to this week? Well, uh, I've done a bit of gardening. This week was the first week where it wasn't either completely freezing or raining or both. So I was able to get out into the garden and I'll show a bit of a roll now. And you'll be able to see I managed to do a bit more stonework in for those uh, beds I'm putting down to the hogging. That, that black stuff is the base coat. And then I was just levelling it up, doing a bit of hand tamping. Uh, but the rest I'm just hoping the weather and the rain and snow etc. will tamp it down for that last two to three inches of buff Oswald hogging. I also measured going down and across the bottom of the, uh, the bottom half of the uh, garden uh, and like in the upper half I've, I'm replacing a lot of two before timber bed edging with four before fence posts, uh, bitumen painted on the bottom and backside and then staked in to keep it firm when I put the base coat and the hogging down there it'll make it easier it'll be a lot less weeding and easier hard standing to put the pots on so that's progressing I was quite surprised I made a bit of progress in that I'm going to order the timber I think from Wix this week so that's good the other thing I did is I've managed to do some more lap joints for number one son's uh, drive gates we were over this lunchtime having a look He's managed to, to put up the post wall bolted into the wall so I've been able to take my final measurements so I can cut these these gate cross members down to the size and put the lap on the other side. Question for you carpenters. I've watched a lot of videos but these are basically two six foot tall by well less than four foot wide gates now so between a 2.2 meter clear opening between the posts, how wide should I cut these down to? What's the gap between the fence, the hinge hardware and the post and the bit down the middle? I'm putting feather edge boarding on the frames so the feather edge will overlap where the gate's shut. So what's that gap? Is it 5mm down the sides and 5mm or nothing down the middle? So if a couple of you carpenters can give me advice on those gaps. It's on the videos, but the videos are contradictory. I'd rather take the word of a proper tradesman before I can help myself to cut these down. So that's that. Goes out of the way. <coughs> the other thing I managed to do, you know I mentioned I was going to bring the a cheap scroll saw away from its position in the corner and to avoid having to drag it out. Well, I got the Axe to Universal scroll saw sound and assembled it and it's here now where I thought I'd put it. It's a bit higher than I thought, but it's not as deep and it works quite well, either seated or standing. That's that. There's a video in editing to show an unboxing and assembly. So that's one thing. Now, behind me, bit of a tool hole. Probably a last for some time. Some of you have been commenting that I seem to be spending a lot of time forking out for stuff. Well, as I say, I'm building it up from scratch and because I'm a greedy little piglet, I want one of everything. So I've been spending the kids' inheritance. So I plumped for the final leg in the dust extraction. You notice I got the Schlepak 
50 litre blue drum dust extractor for the big uh, pieces of equipment with the 100 mil holes. I've got the I've got the record power air filter in the ceiling to take the dust particles out. All that was missing was the portable shop vac to take the dust from the truck saw, the jigsaw, the sander and the router. It's on a portable one. I've been thinking long and hard. I've done a video on that and I chose one. I chose one and and ordered it just before Dave from Gumpy's Workshop has been through the same exercise. Hi Dave. Again, <laughs> you've made a better choice and posted it just after I plumped for something else. My final choice was between two or three and the trend that you've got was one of the final three. Uh, and if I'd have known about it being practically half from 280 down to 150, that might have tipped me towards the trend. As it was, I've had my head turned and there'll be an unveiling shortly. But first of all, there's a lot of small stuff I want to talk you through. So I hope you've got a cup of tea and a biscuit, maybe a chat. In the meantime, in terms of expenditure, oh dear, all gone. I'm still short of a thicknesser to go with my jointer and I'm still agonising about that and the roof insulation and the vinyl floor covering but those three are going to have to wait. Such is life. If I didn't keep overspending on each item I'd carefully cost it out. <laughs> I wouldn't have run out of money bit before my shopping list was empty. Anyway, that's beside the point. I'm enjoying myself. What I wanted to talk about is organisation. Now, you'll have gathered by now I'm the least organised person in terms of managing projects. I've forgotten who made the suggestion. Following Fridays, somebody made a suggestion if me half done projects were annoying me, I should shove them under a dust sheet. I'm going to take that on board, <laughs> shove everything under a dust sheet I'm not actively working on and just concentrate on what's on the bench. I might have to buy more than the one dust sheet though. Anyway, we'll, we'll see how it goes. In terms of organising, I've finalised the floor plan with me little bits of card. Uh, the bench stop stuff is going to be on the fold down well, it's, it's not fall down, a, a shallow shelf and stored under the back store station, which is coming off the Stanley saw horses and going on a permanent trolley to bring it up to the same level as the trend router table. So it's all one level. So that's decided. It's still in the air. And of course, once you see the things in place, I'll be shoveling them around and sorting out where the final places are for them. In terms of organising myself, middle of middle, park side, a nice magnetic white whiteboard, so I can put my to-dos and to-don'ts on, stuck up somewhere, so I can see when I come in what the recipe for today is. Now, the other thing is, I'm sure some of you will have seen these, Woodworking journal. I've started using it. Basically, it's a project journal. So, one side is for your drawings, and on the other side is basically project description. Hang on, that's at the start. When it comes down to it, project start date, completion date. A materials cutting list, types of wood you're going for, finish type, tools and equipments needed, and notes, and then space for your drawings. These are it. these are all over Amazon. Just look up woodworking journal. You can get them with different covers. I think that's going to be handy for each project as I go through the year to get everything organised and in place before I get going. That's that. 
Now, I've been buying a lot of small stuff, so we have the pleasure of going through First out, a nice clean and smart Ansio A3 double sided self clean self healing cutting mat A3 size in black as opposed to the messy old blue stained uh, green one I've got. There's a specific reason for this. This is for some of my uh, show and tells which you'll learn about over the course of the year so that's good now these I've already opened these are for these are the stainless steel cleaning shelves take 80 kilos each that's nice 10 inch deep for the cut down Murphy table I'm using as a shelf along there for the bench grinders. So they've come. What was a pleasant surprise was it came with a nice little leveling bubble and down at this end when I opened the first set there was a set of roll plugs and long screws and short screws to screw your shelf material for the bottom and a set of screwing if it was a, a hollow one. Normally you have to hunt out your own separate hardware don't you? So that's the start. But I like the idea of that. That's cute. Now Oh, right, a fateful leather chisel roll. Remember when I got me very tough back saws, I got a nice set of a back saw tool roll to keep them from rusting up and keep them nice and wider version. That was quite expensive. This time I'm doing the, the same with the chisels. So that's quite a nice quality. chamois leather it's a bit thicker than a chamois leather quality tool eight slot chisel roll for my chisels and I've not mentioned this before there's a second one that's going to go in the pot for the giveaway later on in the year I think they're about a, a ten or inch so, not my beaters, where is it? My drapers are going in. This is, these are my training chisels. Do you remember I bought a set of training chisels to go through and learn how to sharpen? So that's, they're going in the chisel roll. And that will roll up to keep under the bench and because I don't trust the workshop not to turn things rusty over the winter the, the when I get my fancy chisels they'll go permanently in the in this and the very tough saws will go in and I'll keep them in the house in the winter so that's another one and that's going in I've put the box somewhere for later. Now, 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 here we go. 
when I started my channel, I said, much to my old dad's disgust, I never did manage to learn how to sharp chisels. And if you remember, there we go again. Luckily, it was the diamond plate, so no damage done. I haven't forgotten, I'm still practicing. Problem I have with the these eclipse patterns is that the roller that you put on your diamond plate to sharpen your chisels on, I'm still having an awful lot of trouble with my hands and my the pressures and I'm getting, I'm not getting the OCD straight line straight across at 90 degrees with a tiny micro bevel again, straight line, black against the, the, the silver, the first polish. It's all over the place. I'm, I'm getting about 15 different uh, bevels all over. So, you'll laugh at me again. I've got the trend Still down the trend rabbit hole. And well, I'll tell you for why. It's it's a strength and hand-eye coordination issue, as I say. Right. Let me demonstrate. The problem I have with the Axminster Rider is that you, you set the angle for your primary and secondary bevel. Like on chisels 25 and 30, you, you set it by putting your chisel in here, mating that up against there and pushing the chisel into the rebate. And that sets the angle. I'm all over the place. That's why it's never 90 degrees. It's causing a lot of fuss. And then, as I say, the narrow roller means I'm all over the place. So plan B I'm using the trend which is easy I can set this down and I'm not trying to juggle the things where I need three hands and the trend attachment has the wider roller. So, I'm going to give that a try now. Wish me luck, I'm going in. No. <laughs> Do you notice I've got a second bench grinder? So the first one, and I've been watching too much of a couple of three or four or five uh, uh, two restorer channels Jim included uh, Tony1721 is it the Norfolk Doorman several others I'm going to do a shout out sometime because I think it's a uh, well it's good practice to restore these old tools and bring them back into the use some of them are over 50, 60, 80, 100 years old are better built than the the modern ones, and it last another hundred years if you if you restore them and bring them back, and they're cheaper than the middle of the world modern ones. So, following advice, although it's probably not my last, wire wheel and some fibre wheels. So, watch this space for that. So that's part of it. The big stuff that's emptied me kitty is here. Now, yeah, you remember me saying January, February. These that are following, I'm doing unboxing and first tries anyway, but I'm just giving you a sneak peek. I said January, February it was going to be sleds and jigs month. You saw that I'd started sorting through my rubbish pile uh, for sheet goods to make a crosscut sled for the Rage 5 table saw 
and a crosscut sled and maybe a circle cutting sled for the bandsaw and I'm still there I think I've got two maybe three of them it's certainly going to be a small part sled which is which you just needs now assembling uh, for, for the rage and a small crosscut sled for there but the router table the things I want to make from February March onwards on the router table that also need sleds and looking at lots of YouTube videos I think they're a little too much for my skill level at the moment so I've plumped for well I won't say cheap and cheerful they are in terms of uh, commercial uh, the branded sleds uh, but I'll show you them. So first of all, a brace of sleds for the router table and for this I've gone to Rockler. As I say, there will be an unboxing. So, rail coping sled. <clears throat> you know when you're on the router, pushing pushing that sort of timber along along with the game along the long edge is fairly easy and stress free against the router table fence but when you're pushing the end of pieces in that's a bit problematic in terms of whirling carbide and end grain so you need a sled so the rockler rail coping sled You'll see an unboxing and you'll see it in action when I start making boxes. First one. Next one. Now I know people have made these themselves and demonstrated. I will probably make a better one. And I'll certainly, when I get better at it, make one for the table saw. But at the moment I'm using this one. I'll do the unboxing on that. It's the Rockler router table box joint jig, so I can make box joints and they look very pretty with contrasting timber on there. And they come with, if you, you see them, ready-made pins in three different widths, quarter, three-eighth and half inch, so you can make quarter, three-eighth and half inch box joints. So that's the next one. And the last one. Router table spline jig. When I get going in boxes, particularly once I've done the Rage 5 small parts table sledge and I can do mitres on the ends of box carcassing, but the mitre joint, you need to reinforce the mitre joints on small to medium boxes and a table spline jig is the way to reinforce the, the the corners because the mitre joint isn't that strong and you put contrasting wood splines in so I'll be able to cut the splines on the small parts jig on the table saw and then I can put the decorative splines in on the router table so that's that the dust extraction well, as I say, I'm going to be doing an unboxing of this. I'm looking at several varieties. I wanted a HEPA filter. I wanted a power through rather than having to plug my power tool and the Hoover in separately. So power through and I wanted the automatic shaker on the vat that cleans the filter. And I've been looking several varieties they are expensive i've ended up with the baby of a series because it's a system uh, if i say system does that ring a bell with you so i'm not going to be replacing my hand tools anytime soon but as they die and my finances recover i may be upgrading some of the cheap you know the trucks or the not the, the router, the, the track saw sander and the jigsaw with this system. I'll give you a hint. 
I got sidetracked by this a while back, which has pushed me down two rabbit holes. Can you see? Can you guess what it is yet, guys? Fast tool CT15. I couldn't afford at the mini or the midi or the bigger ones. Who wants to pay six, eight, nine hundred quid for a vacuum cleaner? But this will get me going and for occasional use a fully packing 15 litres is going to do me, especially as I've got the bigger one for the bigger tools. As I say, unboxing on that, that's fine. Did I say two rabbit holes? This is where this comes in. It, you know, after I got that, which was a late night, drunken shopping, I started looking at knives. And I've got myself a new Stanley marking out knife. And I've got myself a Gerber a craft knife for unboxing and pouring up the paint cans and the bottles of beer. Still love this, it's always in my pocket. But on here, some other guys I've been following over the year, and I mentioned this on Small Workshop Adventures because he's just shown something that he's got coming. I've got this thing on order from Santa's Workshop, but it seems to be a slow boat from China for carving and whittling, a cheap carving and whittling set. But then again, I got got my head turned and I've got myself it's not an expensive one a rough rider whittler so I'm getting a cheap whittling set where the cut proof glove and three little knives and gouges but that's delayed but I got myself a pretty one to play with I'm in love it's got little blue liners the bolsters are great the shield's fantastic offer no it's, it's only 25 quid including postage but that's made me pocket money treat this month now I've always shot my time, I'm coming up to 30 minutes. Those of you that are still here, I'm really pleased you've stayed. I'm really pleased that you shared in my last big tool haul for a while. Oh, ooh, there's another thing I nearly forgot to tell you. Something's come up this week, I've confirmed, that's been on a back burner since last October with all these <coughs> lockdowns is. I'm starting a two-day come to a workshop course over at Leeds two consecutive Saturdays starting next Saturday so I'm really looking forward to that Ooh. perhaps I won't be as cack handed after those two days let's see how it goes I'll give you an update next Sunday I want to. expect over the next weeks it's the it's the building of the sleds the fettling of the Rage 5 table saw finally maybe if a show and tell of the drive gate when it's done. I'm going to settle back to a Sunday update and then the unboxings will just be random as and when I'm doing it. I'm not sticking to a schedule for the next month or so apart from the Sunday update and the projects will be done when they're done. That's up for me for now. Sunday at four o'clock, that's time to get the whole thing up edited and loaded. As long as it doesn't end up in upload hell. It was 24 hours last Sunday. It just sat there. No idea what's happening with YouTube. I think they need to feed the hamsters more on the servers. But there we go. Right. That's me done, chaps. You crack on and enjoy yourselves in your workshops. I'm off for my cup of tea.